Halleluja. My brother, my sister, we are at the end of 24, 25, 26 Sundays about dead works, good works that I believe for the New Testament church. This is a prophetic season to understand that wise virgins, wise builders, please lay that foundation accurately. Do it with the Holy Spirit as wise virgins. Take that. Let us not be fools. Let us not be foolish. And just go over, over it and think, they're okay, they're okay. I've heard that before. But may God help you to understand the good works that he has prepared for you in advance from long ago, from the foundation of the earth. When he created you, he created you not just to be, but to do. Let's say, God created me to be, but also to do. And that you will express a love towards him through good works. Through good works. That you will not in that way do before the Lord in heaven, but here on earth. There's a certain way that he wants and desires for you to honor him and to love him. That is through good works that he has prepared for you. Each one in a unique way. Hallelujah. So, today when talking about Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, let's go with the first verse. In Revelation. Revelation. 22, 13, 14. Behold, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. What he has done. The good works. I don't say the good works and the bad works. The good works and the dead works. To what they have done. And then it says in verse 13, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. When in many translations it would say, behold, or you would say, look. What does it mean, my brother, my sister, that you will not necessarily just see it. You are being commanded to behold, commanded to look, commanded to open you, your eyes to see. You will find more than a thousand times that the word will say, behold, or look, or see. See, I am with you. That means you're not necessarily going to see it. It will not just necessarily happen. But so if God says, behold, I'm coming, I'm coming quickly. How does it say? Look, I am coming soon. I'm coming soon. Then it is not just on that day, but he wants to come tomorrow, tomorrow in your situation. His reward is with him. But what does that also mean? You are accountable for your deeds, for your works, for, for that what you do and do not do. You are accountable for that. And in the reward, it's not just, it's not a thing of, okay, you get a little bit of something and you get a lot. In that reward, the biggest reward is knowing him, is knowing him. So if you can allow God to come tomorrow, in that what you do, he will tell you, stop this, do that. Yes, this is great, build on that, but cut that out of your life. And in that, the reward is a more excellent life after that. Now, right now, when you choose to hear, and not just to hear, but to see, when you make, take the command from God to behold, the command to see, the command to look really into, not just hear what I'm saying, but you can see what I'm saying. And in that place, God can meet up with you right now. And for certain things, the reward of God saying, yes, and do this more. No, cut this out of your life. You walk out with a reward here of more of him, less of you. And a more quality, excellent life. That you can have a life with eternal value. But that's your choice. That's your choice. So when he says in all of that, I am the Alpha, the Omega, the first and the last. What is he saying? I am the first. I am the beginning. Alpha, Omega, first, last, the beginning and the end. So who must have the first say in your business, the first say in your dreams, the first say in your emotions, God. So it's not just the first say, he must come first in whatever you do, whatever your plan, whatever initiative you want to take, he must be the first. 
He must be the center of that initiative. But he must be the first, but he must also be the end. And that you don't go astray because you were successful and now you are that. You got this temptation and now you are wara wara or you're going into the fields feeling sorry for yourself. And, and there you go. Uh, uh, God is the first. God says, I want to take the initiative with you. I must be the first. But I must be the last also. So you need to focus on me. That whatever you do, whatever you dream about, whatever your vision, whatever your strategy, I need to be in it right at the end. But I must be the one that started it. So where do you begin? You begin with something, but you begin with the one that is called the beginning. Hello. So you begin with the author of heaven and earth. You begin with the king of kings, the lord of lords. He is in your initiative. He is in your idea. He is the beginning of your idea. Where did you get that vision? Oh, from God. And then tomorrow when it's the end of that meeting, he was the beginning of the meeting because you went into the meeting with him, with his guidance, with what you believe God said, with prayer. And if you don't know what on earth you're going to do, you went in there with praying in tongues, you went in there in surrendering to God, went in there with humility and dependency, making a decision to say, God guide me that I will not open my mouth unless I have peace to say what I must say in that meeting. So he's the beginning. He is the beginning of the meeting. And at the end of the day, when you look back, he's the end of the meeting because you were, oh, God did this, God did that. I'm not talking about being super spiritual. God is a practical God. But he wants to be the beginning and the end. Because that's his name. He is the beginning. And from who he is, he created something. And he called it the beginning of earth and heaven. So, uh, are you with me? He's from eternity. From, from before everything, he was there. So he as God is called the beginning. So if I'm... If I am the light, I bring forth light. Are you with me? So if he is the beginning, he brings forth in you a new beginning tomorrow. Now. Now can be a new beginning as you hear the word. Because why? Because you receive him in your emotions. Him in your heart. Him in your success. Him in that what you want to do and not want to do. So you start now in what you have in your hand with Jesus as the beginning. He's always ready for a new beginning in your life. He's always ready to be who he is. The beginning. Respect him. And begin over, not based on your performance, not based on discouragement. <sighs> I must try it again. I must try to get out of this rubbish again. I fell again and I fell in all this rubbish. And as long as Satan can keep you there to be condemned, to be in a performance, and you don't have the courage to make the right decision with Christ again because you messed up, run to him. He's the beginning of your new opportunity right now, right now, through the blood. Amen. Embrace your new beginning by embracing Jesus Christ. You are with me? Let's say, I will embrace the beginning. He's your master. He's your Lord. Amen. Unfortunately, so many times something, some hoha, some rubbish present itself. And then you embrace that thing of bitterness. Embrace that depression, embrace that negativity, embrace that, that chamorz, that, that temptation. And you know, and you embrace that sin, you embrace that rubbish. Rubbish will be there in the end. You make that rubbish your beginning, that rubbish will be your end. You embrace bitterness as your beginning. Oh, you just look at your face, just look at your life, just look at your way of speaking, how miserable it will be because that is your end. One bitter piece of I don't know what are you with me oh come on man through the blood of Christ today can be a new beginning are you still here Amen. let it be so for you let it be so for me next one there we go 
Revelation 21, 6. He said to me, it is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. To him who is thirsty, I will give to drink without cost from the spring of the water of life. I will do a lot of things, God says. I will give you the fresh water. I will give you the fountain. I will give you certain provision. But there's certain things that God will do only, only if you acknowledge that he's the beginning and the end. And that what you can be, who you can become, is already set out there. God has done a great work, perfect, excellent work on the cross. So it is set out for you to have an excellent life. It is done. An excellent destiny, an excellent dream is set out for you. It is done. But if you cannot acknowledge him as the beginning of your dream, how do you acknowledge that? By sitting with him, by hearing from him, by spending time with him, by getting into the word so that he's not all your smart ideas in the past, not anymore, and our smart things and opportunities that we see. But God, if you're not in the opportunity, if you're not the door of the sheep, I'm not going through that door because hell can also open a door. Many, 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 many doors. You don't pray, God, if the door opens, if I get, uh, if I'm... Uh, accepted for that course or if, if I get that job opportunity I know it's you that's a cop out that's a cop out of being lazy to go and hear from God that you go with the word of God into the opportunity or at the open door you just go past it but any no it's a nice word for fool um, for any unwise person can go through an open door but the wise We'll see the open doors and realize, I, I don't see Christ in it. I don't see him being the end in that. So I cannot assume he's in the beginning. I'm in the beginning here with him that is called the beginning. This idea is from God. But now you need to see him. Where will he be the end that will get the glory and him alone in all of this? Are you with me? Oh man, look at your circumstance and you say, oh, but this, but this, but this. All the excuses why you cannot do certain things. Is that what God said? In your situation, God said, yes, because there's no finance, you cannot become this or you cannot do this. You cannot have this type of job. Yes. If God said it, okay. But if God didn't say that, what, what are you going to do with your life, man? So there was this guy. Uh, you said it this week, and uh, somebody gave him a, giving a teaching clip. And uh, he talked about this man that was the, what do you call it, entrepreneur, innovator. He created all this stuff. He dropped out of school. And that doesn't mean you must drop out of your studies. He dropped <laughs> out of school when he was 13 years old. No money, no opportunity to study. But in him was something else because God was there and he understood it. And then at the end of the day, he started to create what is all this machinery that is now all over the world of excavator and what is all the other waiters <laughs> that you find? All those, all those stuff that you build with. You know, all those big machinery. This guy, 13 years old, he came up with it, and then the engineers were sitting with him, and they were like freaking out how to do this and how to do that. And it was said, and he would go to them and say, no, don't do that, do that, do that, 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 that. <laughs> but you know, in the beginning, he was so shocked in what God has done in his life. So he's, he's, he's tithing of 10%. Was he, took, he understood it differently. He took 10% for himself, and he gave 90% to the kingdom. He was this multimillionaire in the sense of he was the successful, successful man. But nothing around him was any excuse to accomplish what was in his heart. But at the end of these days, he could look back and say, this was only God. But he obeyed God. But he walked with God. He, he allowed God to take the initiative here. And then with the initiative, he heard it. And by faith, he walked out with it and accomplished what God had for him. This man, 13 years old, leaving the, the opportunities. And not because I didn't have that education, because I didn't have that money, because I didn't have that circumstance, I couldn't create. 
No, man. Uh, are you still here? So many things God wants to do. But then you need to acknowledge him in all your ways. Acknowledge him in all your ways. Is he the beginning of what you want to say? Or did you get a... And now you want to say what you want. And then you think you're somebody because you gave your opinion and you let them know what you think about this. Any fool can do that. Any fool can do that. That's what the Pharisees thought they can do. They can just speak up and whatever, say whatever they want according to their opinion and then they have authority. No, rubbish. It's a wise man that rather will keep silent and bring it before God and then only speak when it's God speaking. God will help you, God will help me. And when, when God is speaking, I'm not talking about just preaching the word. I'm talking about God speaking like through this man and saying, okay, let us do this. Let us not do that. Let us do this. And in the end, this was major, this major entrepreneur. And what he created is all over the world. And major buildings could, and things could be built because of this guy. They gave God all the glory and said, no, no, no I only need 10%. Let's use the other 90% for the kingdom. <laughs> okay. Are you still here? Next one. Let's go. He who was seated on the throne said, I am making everything new. Revelation 21. He said, write this down, for these words are trustworthy and true. I am making everything new. Guys, when God says, I'm going to do a new thing in your life. It doesn't mean yesterday it was a lot of rubbish. It could be, and then through the blood, everything will be new. But God, if God says, I'm going to do something new, yesterday could have been this major, major, major success. And the new thing that God wants to do is the small thing. It looks like you need to give up all the success. So something new doesn't mean yesterday was a lot of rubbish. It's not a thing of condemnation. Something new has to do with because God do always something new. He's always fresh. Hello? He's the beginning. And he's the beginning of your life. Because the day when you gave your life to Christ, that was the biggest miracle. Because you accepted the beginning. You accepted the beginning that gave you a new life. And the beginning of a life that has eternal value. That for eternity you will be with God. You're not going to burn in hell. Because you accepted the one that is called the beginning. That every next day can be a new beginning. As you allow the one that is called the beginning. To do a new thing. In you and through you. Amen. That is the biggest miracle that could happen in your life. When you gave your life to Christ. But you can ignore it. You can ignore it. There can be the beginning birthed in heaven. The one that can do the new. The fresh. The freshness of heaven. The new initiative from heaven. Can be in you. But you can choose to ignore it. You can choose to ignore it. What a waste of a life. You're going to go to heaven. But we can waste our lives here on earth man. Well, it's okay. Waste your life. But no, why? Tell your neighbor, why? No, say it with attitude, why? <laughs> okay, oh, come on, man. Write this down, for these words are trustworthy. It's important for you to remember. I even say that, guys, you cannot come and you cannot sit with God with the word and you don't write down. Unless everything God says, God, I'm going to spend time with you. But I know, I know actually everything that you're going to say. And um, it's not really something new. It's not really something I need to remember. But go and look in the word of God how many times he actually says you must write down. So please, not just on a Sunday here. But when you have your time with God, have something and write it down what God is saying to you. Even write it in your Bible. So that one day when you Omar. You can give your Bible to your grandchild and says, oh, here in all of this is what God told me, what God did with me, how he worked with me and what he promised me and even promises for you that I prayed. It's all in here. Oh, man, that's more worth than 100,000 rand. Do that, man. Uh, are you with me? Next one. 
I'm being confident, being confident of this, that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. Paul says in the previous verses that I am praying for you, constantly praying for you. Why? So that you can get out of trouble, so that you will not have such a chasakal, what's that in English? Uh, struggle the whole time. That you have, have all the struggles. I'm just praying that you will get out of the struggles. No. I'm praying for you because I'm confident that the one who brought the new life in you when you accepted the beginning and you were born again, that he will complete it. So I'm speaking to the one that do a, will do a complete work in your life. When I'm praying for you, I'm focused on the one that's going to do an excellent, life in, uh, excellent work in your life. And because I believe, I'm confident that God is going to do an excellent work in your life. That's why I'm praying for you. Not because you first of all has a need. Are you still here? Come on, let your prayer life change in that. Even for yourself. Because only because you believe God started to work in me. He's going to complete it. That's why I can bring my life before him. He's wanting to do an excellent thing in my life. And because God, your father, wants to do an excellent thing in your life, that's why you come in prayer. Okay? You are still here? I forgot something of the previous scripture. I'm just adding it now when he says, I'm doing a new thing. At the end of everything, God says, I will shake everything, even now, through the prophecies. He's, God's going to shake the heavens and the earth. And the heavens, he's not, he's going to shake his own throne. No, he's going to shake the heavenly realm over your life. So the atmosphere over your life that will make sure that hell is over your life so that there's no open heaven. Oh, 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 okay. It will stay there. And hell will put a lot of more miserable chamors, rubbish over your life. Unless in prayer you present yourself before the Lord. Because through the blood you bypass this chamors, heavenly realm over your life. And you bypass and you stand before the throne of grace. But you know, but when you walk from that throne of grace, you will still be under that chamors cloud atmosphere of rubbish over you. Unless, unless, unless you start to get into the word and speak for the word. So that on earth, in your life, it will be as it is in heaven. And there's an openness, 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 openness coming over you. And what will happen? The heavens over you are shaken. The heavenly, the spiritual atmosphere over your life is shaken. The earth where you walk, the circumstance, everything is shaken so that you come in God's perfect will, perfect will. Hello? So that where you go and you open your mouth, you pray, you bring the open heaven. So why can the Hamas rule over the nation? Because the church does not position itself accurately to bring the open heaven over this city, over this nation. Not anymore. I don't speak it. In Jesus' name, it's going to change. Amen. Are you here? Great. Okay. So what are we saying? Then in that verse where God said, I will do a new thing. In the beginning of that chapter, it says, there will be a new heaven and a new earth because God's going to do something new. Tomorrow, the heavenly realm over you can be new. The place in the way that you work can be new, can be fresh. And then he says, but in the end of the time of everything, in the perfection of everything, heavenly, heavenly realm is so shaken, earth is so shaken that only the new will be there. And there will be a new heaven, perfect, new earth, perfect, and the new Jerusalem. The home of God will come down from heaven on earth. Hello? And in that place, what is it all about? The home, the home, the home of God. The new Jerusalem, the home of God. Where his peace will rule. And his peace is this perfect harmony, perfect intimacy, perfect place of being with your God. Are, are you still here? God wants to do that new. Yes, in the beginning, in the beginning, the beginning created the heavens and earth. In the end, the end, called Jesus Christ, will bring the new. Not because God made a mess in the beginning when he created heavens and earth. No, no, no. We made a mess, but through the, through the blood it's being restored. 
so that even the end will look so much more beautiful than the beginning. So what you get from God, what promise? You write down the promises of God. You don't write down the promises of God. Hell will let you make sure that you will remember stuff from the beginning. You know, when you made that rubbish decision. You know when you did that and when you did that and when you made, did that. He will make sure that you remember it. But if you can remember God in your past, what he has done. He was the beginning when you made that decision. While there was a sermon, when there was the word of God. You made that decision in prayer. No, the decision, it didn't work because I fell again. Okay? You made the Hamor's decision also. But who will have the final authority? Your decision in the Hamor's or your decision to follow God? Go with the first one. Amen? And then work your way into that what God has for you. All right, are you with me? I'm confident God who started the work in you, he will complete it. Next one. So he said to me, this is the word of the Lord. Not by power, not by might, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Amen. Holy Spirit will remind you of what God said. He will open it for you now. So that in the future you will have an excellent destiny. Excellent destiny. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. This is the one who was and is and is to come. Let's say, he is the one who was, who is, who and is to come. So you look back in, in the past of your life, he was there. But why did the rubbish happen? Maybe you ignored him. Maybe things happened around it and you don't understand it's not if you understand what he has done in the past and then you okay, God. Okay, Lord, you were there. Let me judge if you were there or not. Prove yourself that you were there. Yay, that's some nice arrogance. It's not for you to understand everything because we will never understand everything. And life will not be fair and we will say there's not, we don't see fairness of life. But that doesn't mean the righteous one was not there. He was. If you understand that he was, then you will see him that he is in your circumstances. And then you will see that he will be in your future. But you struggle always with your past and what people did to you and how they did wrong. What people did to you and things that happened that was not nice. And you don't allow to go beyond your hurt, because beyond your disappointment, beyond your fraught rubbish decisions you're not allowing that to happen through the blood of christ you will not see him in the now you cannot see him in the future because you're not prepared to deal with the past to deal with the yesterday but he was there say god forgive me for ignoring you for not being patient saying foolish stuff Instead of speaking the word of God. And through the blood of Christ, the past is, is, is out. It's wiped out. You will, you will only overcome, first of all, through the blood of the Lamb. Amen. He was there. And in, even because of whatever decision I made, be, even because of things I did not write, things that I said that was stupid or whatever, still... Wow, God, by your grace, you are prepared to be now here in my situation. Was, he is here, and he will be in your future. Amen. But he must be the beginning of your relationship. He must be the end of that relationship. He must be there in that relationship with that guy, with that lady from the beginning. He must be in your ideas, be in your, your dreams, be in what you study, be in... What you want to accomplish. Make sure. But somebody is going to be. You can call that demon the beginning. You are the beginning with me. Oh, who will say that? This demon of remorse. This demon of bitterness. You will be. This demon of negativity or fear or whatever. You come and be with me in the beginning of Monday. Who will make that decision? You will not be so stupid. But unfortunately, the enemy is clever. 
if I don't choose that God must be there in the beginning, the enemy will take his place. Because there's an open door. Hello. If you don't invite God in, the devil will him invite himself in. So that demon of fear, that demon of whatever stuff is, he will be the part of the beginning of your Monday. No, so it, no, no. So it will be Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Are you still here? Not by power, nor by might. That doesn't mean not by power, nor by might, and I'm going to beat you up. No. With the right power, I'm going to beat No, no, no. He's talking about your fantastic ability. You have power. You have ability to do a lot of stuff. And God says, not by your excellent, masterly, developed ability, you will do what God wants you to do. You will not do. It will be burned away. It's going to be a hamorse, man. It's, it's not going to be... It's not going to work, but only if the Spirit takes the initiative. Only if God is the beginning of what you do. Not by power, not by might. By my Spirit. You're going to sit with the Word of God. You're going to sit with the, with the Holy Spirit to open it up for you, and you will see. Are you with me? Okay, then we go on. Verse 7. What are you, O mighty mountain? Before this man, you will become level ground. Then you will bring out the capstone of shouts, God bless it, God bless it. That has to do with grace, grace upon you. What are we saying there? You will have mighty mountains. Oh, there will be mountains in your life. Some will be organized by hell. Some will be organized by God. Why? By God, because he wants to show forth his glory. He wants to show forth his glory. So if he finds a man that will honor him above a Goliath, he will make sure that you must go and give some Kentucky and Coke, you know, for the guys, the soldiers. So David had to bring all the food to his brothers. They were the soldiers. He's just watching the stinking sheep, you know. So, Mr. Delivery, David, there you go, and bring the food to your brothers. And the soldiers, the brothers, said, what are you doing here? You are just nosy. You just wanted to see what's happening here. Oh, it's time to take offense. It's time to be hurt because they didn't respect me. They didn't honor me. They didn't love me. They didn't embrace me. I'm their little brother, you know. And look how they deal with me, how they handle. And you must go for prayer and, and counseling and all of this. And at the end of your life, maybe you are type of healed. And that's the end of your life. Okay, great. Praise the Lord. You're still going to heaven. But what about right that day? Right in that day. You can be the one that slay the intimidation of the whole nation of God, Goliath. If what? If you come from the presence of God. The previous verse. The previous verse. Don't address your mountains and say, hey, you'll become a level plain. I will walk over this mountain. Don't try and address the mountains. If not, verse 6, you first allow God to say, Holy Spirit, you come. If it's not through you, Holy Spirit, I will not do this. Even if I'm clever, and I think I'm clever, and I have a lot of answers that I can give. I'm not going to go with that. Don't grieve the Spirit, my brother, my sister. He will never leave you, never forsake you. But you can grieve him. Hello? And you can quench the Spirit that he will not speak. The fullness of Holy Spirit will still be there, but he will not be speaking when he's grieved, when he's quenched. But you know his voice. You know his voice. You know his voice. In the good works that you must do, you know his voice. But the problem is to distinguish his voice. Learn how to respect God in such a way that you will not ignore his voice. You know, sometimes. Not us, but other people. You know, then your dad would call, your mom would call, and this. And you hear the, your mom, you hear that, but there's just other things that are taking your focus. Or in your head you have your reason why not you're going to respond to the voice of your dad. You know people like that? Oh, we pray for them. Hey. Okay. What, what are we saying? Oh, man. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. Finish and clear. So you decide if he was lying or he was speaking the truth. So you know his voice. But the problem is, 
Are we going to respect his voice? Are we going to turn to him where we know he is speaking so that we can see what he is saying? Like we said a hundred times here. Habakkuk 2, I will stand on my watchtower. I will see what he is saying. And see what he is saying doesn't mean you understand everything that he, what he is saying because his ways are not your ways. Finish. His ways are not your ways. But many times, God will make sure that you don't understand. Why? He's pleased when you walk by faith. (laughs) And walk by faith is when you don't understand, but you still give him everything. You will honor him. And by faith, you are saved from hell and eternal chamors. And by faith, you will overcome the world today. By faith, the righteous will walk. By faith, hello? God is pleased by faith. Hebrews 11, 6. Are you still here? But turn by faith. Where will you get the faith to look beyond all the stuff to him? The word. Faith by hearing the word. And you take what you hear and more you get the word in, the more you can walk by faith over into there where you hear his voice. Where you hear his voice. Are are you still with me? But all the other voices, they're going to speak. But if you don't allow the spirit to speak, not by power, not by might, your excellent developed talents, but first of all by the initiative of the Holy Spirit, then you address your mountains. And you tell that mountain, you become a plain. I will walk over you. But not walk over you. I will walk over you. You'll become a plain. Finish. So, come on, guys. Let's say, Holy Spirit, help me to sit with you in the Word so that I will address my mountains in your name. What did the David say? Goliath, you come to me with this, that, that. You come to me with the facts. I come to you with the truth. I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you from a place where I know my God, a place where I know. And I have one question. How dare you come? Where did you get the guts from? To come against us. Do you not know who we are? We know who we are. Therefore, who, who do you think you are? But too many times it's, I first face Goliath and then I run to the Lord. Yes, in his grace, he will still protect me. Yes, in his grace, he will be there. But come from the presence of God into tomorrow. Into tomorrow. And tomorrow, one of the good works that God has prepared for you is to speak to the mountains. Tomorrow is to stand before Goliath. It's a good work that God has prepared for you. To stand before Goliath so that you will slay Goliath. So that the fear in the nation that are all intimidated because of that thing will leave. And they will say, wow, what did David do? That, oh, I'm a sick. Cheeky guy is a what? Whatever, that guy, a cheeky guy. Well, how did that, he, what cheeky guy is, came here? You know, this teenager. Oh, come on, let him just grow up. Let him get back to reality. You know, he's not using his brain. Even Saul presented his professional armor to him to use. And he said, no, he's not, I'm not interested. What cheeky guy is that? He will not even take what the leader of, the commander of the whole nation is giving him. He says, no, I don't need that. Oh. You don't need that, okay? (laughs) Who do you think you are? Are you with me? Now, how did that guy get the nerve or whatever from to go and stand in front? Oh, that's it. Who are you? What did he do? How did he use? No, he just... No, but that can... Oh, he said, he said, he said, I come to you in the name of the Lord. I come to you in the name of the Lord. You don't know who I present. You don't know who's the one with me. I know who is with me. So if you know who is with you, my brother, my sister, you will face the Goliath. And, but there's intimidation and the Goliaths can say what they want. They can take the nation into a captivity until, until, until the day the church will rise will rise. The church will rise and say, how dare you come against us? God's purposes will be fulfilled in Bluefontein in South Africa, there where God sent us. Amen? 
So, let me go on. So, he will bring out the capstone on, to shout, God bless it, God bless it. In other translations, grace, the grace. Grace is God's unmerited favor. Grace is God's ability. God bless it. It's only because of God's blessing on that man that he could do that. So if you are coming from the place with the word and the spirit and you speak to the mountains and they will become a plane and people will say, wow, man, look at that businessman. He just had the wisdom how to do this. Just had the wisdom to do that. How can that guy give 90% to the kingdom and just live from 10%? Oh, wow. Where did he get the strategy for all this stuff? It's because of God's grace on his life. It's because of God's hand on his life. It's just because of God blessed that man. And that's what you will say at the end of the day. When you look back, you started with God, you end with God. He's the beginning and he's the end of your initiative, of your dream, of your business. And you will look back and you will say, this is because of God's blessing. This is only because of God's grace. It's not, nothing about me. It's not my cleverness, not my religious, spiritual superiority about others. It's only because of God's grace. Amen. There we go. Next one. The hands of this man laid the foundation of this temple. His hands will also complete it. Then you will know God Almighty has sent me to you. Then you will know. Then you will know. But you must understand what you have in your hand. Is it going to be your excuse or is it going to be God's opportunity? That what God has started with you, what God wants to do through you, my brother, my sister, Yes, it will happen. Yes, you will be able to complete it. The good works that God has prepared for you, you hear it from God. You start with it. But five loaves of bread, two fish, that's your professional excuse. Why the people must disperse, they must go to the towns and find them some food. Let them just not be so stupid and sit here and see they, are, they could be dehydrated. On the what, 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 what. Let them go and buy some food. We also feel sorry for them. We also, as disciples, feel, no, 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 they must, we must care for them. Let's think about them. You know, let them go and fetch them some food. And here's our excuse that we can bring you, Jesus Christ, uh, Son of God. This is why they need to go and do that. Because we have only five loaves of bread and two fish. But your only, 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 when given to God, is God's opportunity. Your excuse can be God's opportunity. Amen. The hands that started the work. When you start what God has given you to do, enemy will try to discourage you all the way. Oh, come on. Who made the decision? I'm going to stop with this. And then it's like all hell broke loose. Hello? Are you focusing here? Everybody on the phone? They are just taking notes, eh? Here you go. <laughs> are you still here? So what are we saying? What do we say? Please, walk in humility with God in his presence. And from that place, address your mountains. From that place, you walk over that mountain. From that place, yes. What you've started in the name of the Lord, that you will finish. Because he's the beginning and the end of that what he has given you to do. Five loaves of bread, two fish. You give it to God, follow God's strategy. And you'll see the nations are fed. You will see the miracles happen in and through your life are you here and people will know that you came from God people will know that you are sent from God that you are there because of God okay because he wants to show himself five loaves of bread and two fish he makes sure that there's not enough God will make sure that you don't have enough oh I thought it's the devil sometimes God will make sure you that you don't have enough so that he can show himself. He wants to show himself. He wants to show his greatness. He wants to show how excellent father he is that will always care for you if, 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 if you can bring your excuse and your I just have. If you can bring that to God and give it in his hands and follow his strategy even though it sounds ridiculous. The strategy. Okay, you are still here? Then you will know the Lord Almighty has sent me to you. Next one. Last one. Who despises the day of small beginnings, of small things, other translations, small beginnings? Men will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. These seven are the eyes of the Lord which range throughout 
the earth. There's a whole series of three Sundays that we did on the seven eyes of God. That's the sevenfold spirit of God. Seven spirits of God before the throne of God. It's the seven eyes of God. He's talking about the fullness of all facets, how God see everything. And the eyes of God, the, the, the focus of God is all through the earth. God's attention is on the earth into the nations. Because he's serious about me and you. He's serious about the nations. He's not just watching so that he can punish somebody or check that out and deck that man. God is serious about you. God is serious about me. That's why his eyes are out there into the nations. Because he has a dream for each one of us. Oh man, he wants us to dream, to see the way he sees it. But if you're not going to spend time with him, okay. But there will be other eyes that will tell you how to look at that girl, how to look at that guy, how to see this, how to see all the problems, why you need to fear and be anxious, why you need to have stress, why, why you are right and they are wrong, you know? So there will be some very good eyes that the enemy will provide for you, okay? Unless you decide, I want to see how he sees it. But then... Do you despise what God has given you? These five principles just from this, this chapter, Zechariah. If you can follow it, if you allow the spirit, if you can speak to the mountains in the name of the, the Lord. Hello. If you can understand God's grace on your life, it's only by grace. If you commit to say what, what, what was started by God in my life, I will stay with it. And then you will be blessed. They will be rejoicing if you don't dump it. Plumb line in the hand of, of this man, Zeru Babel. What he started, what you started with your hands, what you started with your hands, your hands must complete it. Are you with me? But your hands must complete it. Now somebody started to think and they didn't see a lot happening. Now your grandmother really prayed for you her hand in prayer did a work over your life and then she she went to heaven but you know her hand is still here oh, it's freaky no she's not spooking she's not a ghost there but the prayer as a legacy is still there because of her prayer all the grand your grandmother's 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 grandmother was really led by the Spirit. Generations messed up. But that prayer from your grandmother's grandmother's grandmother is still there over your life. Because that word prayed in the name of God in the Spirit will not return void to God. It's over your life. That hand will, there will be a rejoicing about that what was in the hand of your grandmother and that prayer is over your life you can inherit it by walking in god's perfect will by walking in what god has for you you have inheritance more than a million rand from generations where some people in generations prayed the right prayers but there's generations that did some chamors maybe did some curses. How can it be that the grandmother, uh, um, they went to, what's he owns, what he dollars, the The witch doctor or uh, Sangoma. Or, you know, and, uh, and, and a blessing was, was given for two generations. Why can that curse work? Because the enemy knows it's a principle that works. He knows it from the word of God that a principle can work. By putting that curse out there because the enemy know that God said the blessing can work for generations for generations so the work that God started in you he will complete the work God started through you that is in your hand you have a prayer in your heart in your hand right now for generations you have a prayer right now when you walk out here when you are in a bus whatever wherever you walk you you have something in your hand even if it's a prayer like, God help the church in Ukraine. God help the Palestinians, the church, that to rise up. To tell them there's not a new generation with 300,000 more demons uh, in the name of revenge and hate and bitterness and unforgiveness. And hell is established in Gaza through the bitterness 
of the right and wrong of everything that it was everything that was done wrong no in jesus now where's the church that will rise up and say no that generation and what happened they, they those kids they suffered enough they must find christ and have an eternal life with christ whatever the enemy thought he can do god will turn it for their good how through an eternal salvation because suddenly the world is looking at gaza hopefully the church suddenly in the world is looking at gaza and suddenly there's from 200 nations brothers and sisters praying for people in gaza wow what a made opportunity for a revival in gaza all the church sit back and they choose sides they say i will not okay so being the Levet, you didn't say that. Say hang yang yang. <laughs> so what are we saying? <laughs> if you can be in the spirit and you can put that prayer out there, God's word will not return void. Amen. Seven eyes. Don't despise the day. Despise the day of small beginning. Because in the small beginning, there's somebody that is called the beginning and he's not small. He's the master of the universe. He's the king of kings, the lord of lords. He is the beginning that gave you something that looked like a small beginning. Okay, look at your small beginning. And let that be excuse why you will just mess up the rest of your life. Or, look who gave you that small beginning. The one that is called the beginning, Jesus Christ. Author of your life. Author of eternity. God, come and do this, what you want to do. Father, I pray that you will touch every man, every woman in this place. God, if we look back and we see things, oh Lord, messed up with decisions, with words, with things that happened that was not from you. Thank you, Lord, that not through shame, but through repentance, we can just know that you're going to do a great work in and through us lord come and do that for every man woman in this place there will be no condemnation but right now as they surrender to you come and meet them in a special way as you say child i forgive you i forgive you through my son through his blood and today is a new beginning for your life thank you father that you come and do that for every man woman in this place that they will walk out in the new beginning today jesus christ the new beginning that is alive in their lives that is speaking to them about how to begin every day how to begin every initiative speak to them lord please i pray and i pray that you'll give us the grace to understand how to look at you how to look at you as we know your voice yes lord we know your voice but help us to respect your voice not to ignore your voice but to to go with what you are saying to us i pray that for every man woman and that whatever words were spoken over their lives it will be broken that what was not from you whatever words that hurt that brought hurt and disappointment from people that's supposed to be close to them lord that there will be healing but there's one that spoke the word from heaven and you sent forth your word and healed them you send forth your word oh, that I love you, my child, and you heal that hurt. You heal them from that fear to get hurt again. You come and you heal them. I pray for the word to, to have such a precious, perfect work in every heart, every soul, to bring healing to every soul in this place. And that we will not just respect your word, respect your voice, but that we will go out there and do what you have called us to do. I pray that for every man woman in this place. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And all say, Amen. Let it be so. Let's give God a hand. Hallelujah. God is awesome. Amen. Amen.